guys, and welcome back to another episode of Federico Talks Watches. Today, I want to talk about a topic that hopefully will enlighten a couple of you guys. And that is, I want to talk about five watches that I find very undervalued. As a watch dealer, I touch watches all day long. I look at prices, I check out margins, and I can sometimes figure out a watch that has a ton of horological value for a price that just doesn't make sense. And that's something maybe you guys can take advantage of. Of course, before we get started, customary wristwatch check. Today I'm wearing the Rolex Submariner. I just noticed my crown was open. Eh, I didn't notice that at all. My Rolex Submariner Hulk, one of my favorite watches in my collection. And absolutely not a watch that's great bang for buck, but not everything is monetary. And of course, guys, go check out DelrayWatch.com. Ton of new watches in stock today. I've got Omegas. Rolexes, I've got a beautiful automatic chronograph under $1,000, Swiss made, and much more. DelrayWatch.com, link in the description below. So yeah guys, sometimes you can find a watch that's priced well below what it should be. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to give you five examples of watches I think are vastly undervalued that maybe you should consider picking up. And this list is in no particular order and runs quite a bit of a price range gamut. The first watch I'm gonna talk about is a cheaper uh, timepiece, a less expensive timepiece, and that is the Bowen Mercier Capeland Chronograph, preferably one with a blue dial, because that's the one I like. What we have here is a stainless steel 42 millimeter chronograph housing a Valjoux 7750 made by a Swiss brand that's well over 100 years old. Bowen Mercier, owned by the Richemont Group, which also owns brands like Vacheron, Cartier, Panerai, and Langenzona, is a brand with history. Here you get a very handsome watch, in my opinion, that is subjective, a very decently decorated Valjoux 7750, and the nice crocodile strap, alligator rather. All that, and it can be had pre-owned for about $1,100 or significantly under. This is a watch that retailed around the $4,000 range. 25 cents on the dollar, guys. Yes, Bowen Mercier may not be the hottest brand in the world right now, but you get a very nice automatic Swiss chronograph that's well-made and is very handsome. I think that is quite a deal. Second is a watch that, was, uh, that came out in the early 2000s. And uh, the design is still recognizable today, but boy, this one is probably one of the best bang per bucks on this list. That is the Girard Perigo Laureato Evo 3. Wow, what a mouthful. Here we have a Gerald Junta-esque design with an in-house Girard Perigo movement with a moon phase and double disc big date that can be had for under 3500 bucks. Guys, this is a GP, all right? The level, yes, the brand not the most popular in the world, but the level of finishing, extremely well made. The movement, in-house, true horological complication and significance from what I consider one of the top tier manufacturers for under $4,000 for 3,500 bucks. I think this is a steal. Now, yes, this watch straddles the line between dressy and sporty, probably closer to sporty, but you get a very interesting timepiece for not a lot of money. Actually, you know what? When I was doing my research today, I almost bought this for myself. No joke at all. Third is another watch I've almost purchased a bunch of times, and that is an H. Moser. One of their time-only watches, the Mayu or the Endeavor. Solid gold, handmade entirely, a, a watch manufacturer that is entirely in-house. They make hairsprings for christ's sake guys very few people make hairsprings and they make parts for other watch manufacturers as well a watch that retails in the high 20s and you can pick it up for under ten thousand dollars new and under eight thousand dollars pre-owned if you look hard enough here you have a movement that is true high horology decorated extremely well kinish uh, the case excuse me the case is finished to a very high standard great polishing and a brand that is truly exclusive and makes their watches by hand and in very small numbers. Honestly, this is probably one of the best high horology deals in the world for under $10,000. H. Moser, a brand 
that I love what they're doing. You know, they're young spirited, their marketing is genius, their CEO is young and moving in the right direction. A brand I generally really enjoy and I will own eventually offering such great value pre-owned simply because the market isn't really hot for them right now, but it will be eventually, in my opinion. Fourth is a very interesting watch, one that I've sold quite a few of a Delray watch, but I don't have one now, so of course no conflict of interest, from a brand with a famous name that uh, kind of died off a couple of times, and we're talking about the Gerald Genta by Retro. The namesake of the brand, Gerald Genta, the designer of the famous Nautilus, along with a bunch of other watches, uh, made a brand, and then the brand got bought by Bulgari. However, these Gerald Genta by Retros are jump hour watches with by retrograde modules. The lower end ones have ETA 2892s with um, these jump hour and retrograde modules, and the higher ones, higher end ones, offer the Gerard Perigo in house caliber 3000 with the modules. These can be had, you know, the lower end ones for under 1500, and the higher end ones. Uh, you know, generally around $3,500. Here we have a very interesting case, uh, a name with pedigree, a watch that is truly complicated, double retrograde, seconds, hours, and you have a jump hour complication in a design that is truly unique. Now, I'm aware this is not for everybody. The design is a little bit out there. But if you're a watch geek, there are way worse ways to spend $3,500. I actually really, really love this watch, but I love a lot of watches and I got to pick and choose what I own. Once again, I do think one of these will eventually make it into my collection. And then last, we have a watch that is usually under $1,000, a great starter watch, a very handsome watch by a brand I don't always love. And that is the Frédéric Constant Moonphase. Now, I know they don't make a watch called the Moon Phase. They make a lot of different Moon Phases. But Frédéric Constant is a brand that on the higher end makes their own in-house movements for a very reasonable price. And on the lower end makes gold-plated quartz watches, which I very much dislike. This, for under $1,000, makes a very handsome Moon Phase watch powered by an ETA. Attention to detail, very well designed, uh, very elegant. This is a dress watch, and everybody knows I'm a fan of the dress watch. I think for under 1000 bucks for a first uh, Swiss-made piece with one of my favorite complications, something I find very poetic and romantic, the Moon Phase is a fantastic choice. Once again, Frédéric Constant, not my favorite brand, but on the higher end, and I would consider this one of their mid to high end pieces, really knows what they're doing, and I think you guys should check it out. Anyway, guys, those are just five watches. I make these lists a couple times a year, and there's a lot more choices out there as well, but these are the five that struck me today, and I think you should really check them out if you're looking to add something to your collection. Let me know what you guys think in the comments uh, section below. I'd love to see if you agree with me. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for sticking around with me for another episode of Federico Talks Watches. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. It really does help. And, of course, I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.